Welcome to this Tutor to You topic video that looks at reducing the development gap through TNC investment. This is part of paper two, unit B, changing economic world. There are a number of strategies that can be used to reduce the development gap. One such strategy is TNC investment. Transnational corporations or TNCs are large businesses that operate in a number of countries. They usually have their headquarters in HICs and the majority of production in LICs or NEEs where costs are much lower. They are also known as multinational companies or MNCs. TNCs often separate their production between various locations or they have different divisions, head office and administration, research and development, production, assembly, sales, all separated around a continent or the globe. Many TNCs have become synonymous with globalisation, such as Nike, Facebook, Apple, Netflix, Uber, Amazon, Google and Samsung. The biggest 500 TNCs together account for nearly 70% of the value of world trade. There are a number of reasons that TNCs choose to operate around the globe. Operating in more than one country lowers the risk of things that may affect production, such as union disputes, government instability, supply disruptions and financial uncertainty. If these occur in just one country, they are unlikely to disrupt overall production, as production can be switched to alternative plants relatively quickly if needed. Operating in other countries also helps to maximise profits in a number of ways. Many TNCs choose to do their production in LICs and NEEs where wages are much lower. Wages are often the single largest cost for a firm, so locating production in low-wage economies can maximise profits immediately. Some TNCs choose to locate in countries with low business tax. If they register their profits there, they can ensure they pay minimum tax. Many TNCs locate in Ireland for this reason as they charge 12.5% tax compared to 20% in the UK. Some TNCs choose to locate to avoid trade tariffs and tax barriers. Some Japanese firms set up plants inside the EU to avoid import taxes being imposed on cars from Japan, for example. And some TNCs choose to locate in countries where businesses are subject to much less regulation. For example, fewer laws governing employment rights, trade union rights and environmental protection. TNCs play an important part in reducing the development gap. If TNCs manufacture goods in NEEs or LICs, they will pay far less for their labour costs, which means that their products can be made much more cheaply and therefore the price of the product falls, which is good for consumers too. In addition, moving to other countries means a bigger market for selling products, enabling TNCs to expand further. One of the reasons that TNCs are so important in reducing the development gap is that they trigger the multiplier effect that you can see on the screen. This is an upward spiral of the economy and its benefits on employment. Positive multipliers are often triggered by a large investment such as the opening of a new factory. And TNCs can bring huge benefits to LICs and NEEs as you can see on the screen. When a TNC opens up a new branch in an LIC or an NEE, it creates many jobs directly. For example, people working in garment factories for global sportswear companies. At the same time, jobs are created within local firms that supply the TNC with parts of its services, such as maintenance, as there is an increased demand for these. These will lead to local people earning more money so they can afford access to healthcare and education. And they might even start to have a disposable income, enabling them to spend more money in local businesses, such as cafes and shops. This means that those local businesses may have to advertise for additional staff because of the number of customers increasing. As businesses expand, they may end up paying more tax. And in fact, the jobs that are created are likely to be formal jobs, meaning that the workers also pay more tax. More taxes being paid means the local government has more money to, to spend on improving infrastructure and services such as schools, hospitals, water supply, sanitation, etc. The new infrastructure and services, along with a strengthening economy, will make the area seem attractive to overseas firms so a TNC may decide to open up a new branch and the whole cycle starts again. There are lots of benefits of TNC investment. 
Firstly, job creation. TNCs create many jobs and these jobs are often better paid and more reliable than what was on offer before, such as seasonal farming. They may also come with training and education, such as in ICT, or learning to speak another language. Secondly, community investment. Sometimes a company will invest in facilities that improve the quality of life for local people, such as healthcare or schools or clean water supplies, which will also make the company look good. TNCs also have to pay taxes to the government of the host country, which creates much needed revenue to spend on development projects or funding vital services such as health and education. Thirdly, infrastructure investment. TNCs will often fund infrastructure improvements such as new roads, railways, etc. These will help them trade more easily, but they will also benefit local people at the same time and potentially attract further investment in the future, increasing GNI further. But there are also many drawbacks of TNC investment. Firstly, environmental issues. Relaxed environmental laws mean that TNCs create a lot of pollution, such as toxic chemicals being released into waterways or released into the air through burning things like rubber. They are often not prosecuted for these environmental crimes, or if they are, it can take a very long time to admit liability and pay to clean up the damage. A good example of this is the Bodo oil spills of 2008 and 2009, which devastated farmland and fishing waters in the Niger Delta area of Nigeria. It took until 2015 for Shell Oil to agree to pay £55 million in damages, as well as clean up the swamps and fishing grounds. Secondly, there is exploitation of workers. Conditions in factories in LICs and NEEs can be harsh. People work long hours for low pay, often in dangerous conditions. A notable example of that would be the Rana Plaza disaster that occurred in Dakar in Bangladesh in 2013, where a building that was home to many factories making clothing for TNCs collapsed, killing 1,134 people. Today, the garment workers affected are still campaigning for justice and compensation and safer working conditions in the factories. You can see a photograph of those on the screen. Thirdly, we have economic leakage. This is where most of the profits are sent abroad, benefiting shareholders mainly. The best paid jobs also tend to go to people from the origin country rather than those where a branch has been set up. Fourthly, there is political influence. TNCs can exert pressure on governments and they can leave without warning, so governments find them hard to control and they often bribe political parties through financial contributions. In addition, if production costs increase, they may decide to move somewhere else, which can trigger a negative multiplier effect. And finally, there is the issue of over-abstraction. TNCs can also monopolise natural resources, which has been seen in Kerala in India, where local people have protested against Coca-Cola, angry that Coca-Cola has extracted too much groundwater to use in production of their drink, causing wells to run dry, which has led to no drinking water and no water for irrigation for farmers. And this has had a huge impact on the quality of life of local people. That concludes this Tutor to You topic video focusing on reducing the development gap through TNC investment. Thank you for watching.